everyone. Welcome to our very first episode ever of Going Local Now. Now today we're in Northport Village, New York. We just finished wrapping up some interviews with local business owners. But on today's show, we have three very special guests for you. Our first guest is Marnie Pachowski. She actually is from the company or the business, Art from Marnie B and she creates these hand-painted Long Island seashells. She could do custom work, she could do beetles, she can do whatever you want on a shell. She is so talented, and has a beautiful story that she's gonna share with us today. Our second guest is gonna be Long Island Tutoring Company. It's actually owned by a brother and sister, Ross and Diana Weber. The two of them have such great energy. They are such a blast to be around, and today you're gonna to see why they're on our show. Our third guest is going to be Johnny Berry. He's from a brand called Always Sober. He's actually from Shirley and started this company when he was 22 years old because he's the life of the party without drugs or alcohol. So I want to hear more about that and I hope you guys do too. So stay tuned for our show. At the end, we're going to tell you guys what the hell is going local TV, right? You're probably like, what am I watching? What is this? We're going to explain it all for you, give you a rundown, show you, walk us through our site, walk us through our streaming channel, and just make sure you guys understand that we are here to celebrate local and you're going to help us do that. So make sure to watch our show in its entirety. And if you don't have the time for it today, you can watch the clips on goinglocal.tv at any point in time that you want. So make sure to celebrate local, come down and support our businesses. And thank you so much for watching. Give us a like, give us a follow, give us a tag, give us a comment, give us love. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and enjoy our show. This episode of Going Local Now is brought to you by Going Local Tours Experiences and Identity Digital. Hey everyone, we are here today in the Going Local studio with my friend and local artist, Marnie Butchkoski. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, you did. Nailed Hi, it. How are you doing today, Marnie? Good, good. Thank you. Excited to be here with us today? Very excited. We're today. excited to have you. We want to know, first off, when did you start doing your art? How old were you? So, I mean, I was in elementary school when I started drawing, probably kindergarten, first grade. Right. Were I, you always good? So I always wanted to be good. Okay. <laughs> I, I really, drive. you know, I, I, my earliest memory and my oldest sketchbook was about this big. And I used to read Shel Silverstein and I do, he was my favorite. Okay. And I would sit and copy his drawings by sight into this little book. Oh. So that's how I started to realize I liked it. And um, by high school, I auditioned to get into a cultural arts um, specialized school. Cool. So I was um, going to art school from 16 till I graduated. I went to college also for fine art. Yeah. I like to hear that you're trying to hang out with you. <laughs> you're my friend, but yet you still have all these layers yeah. I'm unaware. Give me more onion layers. Keep well, going. Well, it's just funny because I remember I was always really big into art. Okay. Um, and it was recommended that maybe I would be able to be accepted. I had to audition and like draw in front of the staff to be accepted. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And never through my whole like school career was I thinking I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. So I don't really know what was happening okay. with that. Um, I just was getting really good at it. Yeah. And my skills were becoming mastered at that point. Um, I was a portrait artist in high school. I used wow. to do oil portraits um, after school. I would go to uh, Reby's actually in Melville. They're not, not there anymore in their basement and I would do oil painting. So I was raised as an oil painter. How cool. Yeah, and I would do all the specialized class, but I really was drawn towards drawing and painting. Right. 3D I would always do, and, and digital art I use all the time to help with designs and stuff, but I was always a painter, really. So then, when after you graduated college, I remember reading that you were a social worker, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so all right. I, my undergrad took a while. I went to Florida. I um, got a bachelor's in fine arts with a concentration in painting, and then I wasn't quite sure what to do. Yeah. And living in South Florida, I had friends working in the field of uh, mental health and substance abuse, and I got an entry-level job, and I just, I loved it. I would run groups, uh, creative groups. So every Friday, we would do like an art-centered group with the patients. How cool. And that's what started getting me into like maybe social work would be a good avenue where I can use my artistic view. Yeah. Um, I didn't go to art therapy because at the time it was very limited with school. Yeah. And for every hospital, I felt I could grow more as a social worker and just use color theory and expression 
in my therapy. So I got my master's in social work. How great. And, um, and, and art really took a back seat. You know, I got married. I, I have two children. Um, and I would always just do things as needed, something for the nursery yeah. or a little project or something like that. So yeah. what got you back into doing the art that you are in now? What got you back into that? Yeah, so um, back in 2020, I was working, I was working in psych, um, adult inpatient psych okay. for years. Once I moved back to New York, I was born and raised Long Island, went to school in Florida. And it was COVID times, so things were getting a little wild inpatient. My husband worked frontline. Oh, God. And he... He sent me a picture. He sent me actually a selfie of him all covered in PPE, which now is normal. Like, we don't even think twice, yeah. but it was so strange to see. And I was like, that would be such a cool drawing. And now I had a little bit more time. And at th this point, too, my oldest brother, okay. uh, Mark, he, he was an avid surfer throughout Long Island and one of my best friends. Um, he was surfing on a Wednesday. I know I always <laughs> say that this is the story, but um, he was surfing on a Wednesday and by Friday he didn't feel good. And this was Mar This was late February 2020. So everything in the world was getting crazy. Yeah. And he went to a walk-in and they did an x-ray thinking bronchitis maybe, and it turned out to be stage four cancer. Oh my God. Yeah, so so in the, the midst of my husband working um, in the front and me at the hospital, and then he was admitted into um, the hospital, and we couldn't see him. So my husband sent me this picture, and I just was drawn to it, and yeah. was like, let me, I'm going to just focus on something other than... Yeah, something reality. positive, something I can do. It really was like a coping skill. Like, yeah. I just didn't know what else to do, and I was home with my daughters. You know, they're sleeping, he's working overtime, my brother's in the hospital... I need an so, outlet. I need uh, something. Yeah, yeah, I opened my printer. I grabbed printer paper and a mechanical pencil, and I drew this um, portrait. Okay. And that just got me into focusing on something. You know, had my music playing and got back into doing something for me, good. and it felt good. So that was the first thing that got me back in, and this was after – years and years and years of not actively creating yep. anything. You know, my basement's filled with art from college and galleries and all these things, but... but there's this gap, though, because... Was, yeah. yeah. So after that, um, my brother was in the hospital for about a month, and we took him home um, after everything progressed very, very quick. So less than two months later, he passed. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so in May of 2020, he passed. And um, by then... We were, I mean, now it was summer, so things were kind of loosening up a bit. And we were at the beach. We were doing memorials. He surfed. Because he's a surfer, right? Yeah. The way to connect to him. Yeah, the yeah. Hawaiian tradition where all the surfers get together. They go on their boards and put the legs out in the ocean. Yeah, and that's so beautiful. that's where the shells kind of stemmed when I look back. Because what we did was we had this idea, because, like, I'm not a surfer. And my family, we're not paddling out, you know, into the middle of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so we're like, well, let's write a message. So we all did um, little messages on shells that we found before the paddle out, and the surfers brought them out and put them in the middle. Uh, so it was like the first time that I put anything onto a shell. And I was, I was still creating some. I was making memory jars for the kids and for my family just with, like, the sand and shells from the uh, memorials that we were doing for Mark. And come September, now from May on, okay. everything changed in yeah. my perspective. I never had loss in my life like this, never experienced grief like this. Um, I've heard about it. Didn't know until it happened to you. It. Yeah, exactly. So, and something so sudden and unexpected, I just was like, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what is this life? I mean, yeah. How can Start things questioning change? everything, yep. Questioned everything. And I was like, I don't want to work at the hospital anymore. I don't want my kids, you know, having longer days than me. And I just, I need to do something else. So I started looking into some private practice type work. And at that time, it was about September, it was my friend's birthday and okay. I wanted to make her something. So 
I ordered a necklace. Now I would shop local, of course, but back then, and, yeah. like, I need something. Amazon. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Got her a little sunflower necklace, and um, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I was going to draw a picture of her dog. That was, like, my idea. She's probably like, damn, I want that if she's listening. <laughs> um, I did not do that. I opened the package, and I had all these shells from the summer that I was making these jars for everybody with these mason jars. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll make a little jewelry dish for her necklace and it'll be perfect. And I, um, so I did that and she loved it. And that was my first shell. So that was early September of, um, of 2020. Oh my God. And a coworker at the hospital saw it. I was like, this is so cute. Actually, my brother just proposed, can you make a, a ring dish type How thing? How cute. And I just, I had this idea because she was showing me pictures. She was like, yeah, something maybe to capture the sunset, right. something. And I was like, oh, I have an idea. So that was my first photo shell where I painted the shell and I put their image into it. Um, and it was so cool. It was just, it's, you know, never been. You have some custom shells over here, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So basically, give me an example of the custom shell you have yeah, here. So let me show you this one. This one is unbelievable. So this, this is a cool one. So this is like that, but he, uh, this is actually a photographer out in Long Beach, and he had an idea to propose to his now fiance, she said yes, <laughs> uh, with a Long Beach shell, because they live in the area and yeah. they're always at the beach. So we collaborated, you know, he said just something with, will you marry me? And I'm like, well, why don't we capture you on your knee and the kids in the background? So this is a sample of that is unbelievable way. how do you say no to that if you get that as, a, as an engagement you know i'd be like well i have to say yes now yeah, i mean but that is yeah. unbelievable yeah so this this is a lot of what i do this is what has transpired I, I do you know it's it's come a long way so from that first shell it led to i mean i quit my day job i actually yes. left my career because the private practice just was was not working out what did that day feel like when you actually got to say oh, i am done working for the man i'm oh, working yeah. for myself and you said goodbye to a job and yeah. hold to your passion you know at that point it was wild because what i had done was i was like let me try private practice so i was yeah. still working full-time at the hospital taking on a couple clients in the evening and then painting until three in the morning to Crazy. get the and jet. have kids and have a husband and oh, have dogs yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know little stuff little things um, that are important so yeah when i put my notice in it was just such a cool thing because people knew what was happening yep and so it just made sense yep and everybody was just so happy for me and and i worked there a long yes. time so, and i would do art at the hospital like if they ever had um, they had like contests, pumpkin yeah. painting, painting, yeah, and you John crushed Lennon. all of them. <laughs> so um, those were always fun. So yep. they knew, and it was time. It was time. So now let me get this straight. So you are obviously now and not a working artist, but a passionate working artist. I get to do this all in your own time. You don't just paint uh, seashells, though, right? right. So right. what else have you painted lately? Yeah. So I'm definitely more known for the shells. Yep. They have been a continuous, I'm so grateful, they have not slowed down. Yeah. Um, and throughout the past few years, I've painted um, large scale commercial murals and also residential murals um, all over Long Island. Yep. I mean, literally anything you can think of that can be painted. From you can paint. Bird houses to uh, books yeah. to a tire. I mean, anything. Yeah. Really. And my question to you is what is your favorite piece of art that you have created? What is the one thing, or what's the best reveal you ever gave someone that you were like, I cannot wait for them to see this? I have worked so hard on this. What comes to mind? Ooh, there's a lot, there's isn't a there? Lot. It, yeah, it's so different. Um, well, the custom shell that you make, I'm sure, like I've actually personally gotten about yeah. 10 custom shells from you. More than that. And to more me, I, this is horrible. I'm a bad person, okay? When I give somebody a gift, I want them to cry. I, I know, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm horrible, but I want them to cry. That means I really hit that heartstring, like I nailed that present. So every time I give someone a gift from Marnie, I show them the shell, I sit there and I wait for them to start crying. And as soon as they do, I'm like, Marnie, you cried, I nailed it, you nailed yeah. it, this is fantastic. <laughs> But it's such a great gift because it's from the heart, it's from the soul, it's a memory. And a lot of times our photos are put in frames and that's great. But you actually, I saw, like you said, the engagement one, you actually can frame these as well for them now too, right? Yeah, so that's something that 
isn't typical, but it's doable. It's an option. Right. Again, you can right. basically do anything. I always have the boxes on my table. Um, I do events all year round. You also teach, I heard. I do, yeah. What are the classes like? Tell me what those are They're like. They're so fun. So I've, I've done classes where we paint step by step from shells to pumpkins. I mean, anything. Yeah, like, yeah. Really, anything that can be painted, I can do. But... Um, I love it because people come in and they're a lot of a lot of times they're like, there's no way I can paint that. That's who I am. I can't do a stick figure. I am horrible. One or two that I'm like, okay, enough. Yeah. Enough. Of you that. can do this. Like, can we? Because really, it's a reflection of me. Like, if you're coming to take a painting class, the the less experience, the better. Exactly. Because the things that are sitting there, are like, I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm a painter. I got you this. don't need to tell me. <laughs> they usually don't follow along as well. <laughs> But um, it's really cool because I can teach a lot of techniques. Yep. And also they leave with a gorgeous design. I have a few of the designs. Like this is my next class here. This shell is um, for Friday, March 3rd. We're doing, yeah, we're doing a class. And everybody's going to leave with that. I did a corporate event. There was like 23, 20, maybe 25 people. And they all That's painted cool. that. I so had that shell really at home. Fun. Yeah, this is a really, that's a Rockaway inspired design. Do you ever do like farmer's markets or pop-ups anywhere? Yeah, so I do tons of pop-ups. Farmer's markets, not as much. Um, I I do more like makers, markets type, nice. artist, yep. um, vendor events. So everywhere from Argyle around the lake with 300 plus yep. to smaller scale, you know, six to 10 vendors. Yeah. And I do a few a month, depending on the time of year, I do more yep. or less. Uh, I have one tomorrow actually with the mogul uh, group, the moguls of infinite opportunities. They're they do great things I've heard. Women. So we'll be in Sayville and then um, I'll be in Oceanside at Long Beach Brewery on Saturday. And I just, every couple, like, I'll usually plan a month ahead. Good, yeah. And do a few. I love to do it. I love to be out it's there. It's a lot of fun. And why would yeah. they not want to come teach a class with you or have a class taught with you? Yeah. All right. So before we wrap up, I want to know, what is the website? So it's artbymarnieb.com. Dot com. Yes. Instagram handle? Art by Marnie B. And if they want to get touch with you, you can do custom frames, custom photos, custom anything. that You can paint basically anything, correct? Yeah. Girls, what have you? Portraits, all of that. Of port I love painting pet portraits. It's oh, those, like, those, yep. So fun. Um, literally anything. I mean, I think that's what's so cool is I've never said no. We can yeah. always figure it out. Yeah. And I do a lot of commissioned work and it's a collaboration. Um, always it's something special. It yep. means something to the person. So yeah, I can utilize the photos, I can do portrait. Um the murals have been really, really fun. We're going to put some pictures on the screen for yeah. you guys to see what she's been talking about, about her murals and everything else. So before we wrap up, I want to say, Marnie, thank you so much for coming here today. Thank we had a you. great time learning your story, learning about you, seeing your beautiful artwork. And make sure you follow her at Arbor Marnie B on Instagram and go to her website. Look for pictures, look for presents to send people and make them cry. Okay. <laughs> have a great day, guys. Thanks for watching. Marnie, thanks again thanks. so much. Thanks, everyone. See you guys later. Hey, make sure to follow our social media at Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Going Local TV. And if you have any information for us or want to be a part of our show, email us at info at goinglocal.tv. Hey, everybody. We are here today inside the Going Local studio, and we are visiting with Diana and Ross Weber from the Long Island Tutoring Company, a.k.a. Litco. How are you guys today? Hi. Fantastic. Good to see you, yeah. to you guys again. I'm glad to have you guys back. We are too. Now, they are brother and sister. So my first question for them is, how is it running a business with the two of you as brother and sister? He is my best friend, my soulmate, best friend. Are you lying? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been roommates a million times. And yeah, I couldn't ask for a better coworker. No fights? No fights Never. whatsoever. Never. Knock on that wood, people. On, but although... What? Although, what? there's more. Uh, I do remember Curious. hearing a story that you found out you were having a baby brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's coming back. You right? to name that doll Ross I... and throw it down the stairs. I did. Uh, <laughs> threw fake Ross down the stairs before he was born. Intention. <laughs> and I believe it wasn't just once. Uh, but that's okay. But you know, look now. But before she met you. It was before. The doll is dead, but Ross is here and alive and doing good. There, it was just a name. Yeah. Yeah.
And so you guys working together, it's easy for you. Oh, it's so much fun. Okay. So how did this get started? What got you guys to say, hey, let's start a tutoring company? Yeah, well, let me ask you a question. Okay. In your academic career, were there any teachers or how many teachers or professors really impacted you? And, you know, I have to say, that's a really good question, number one. That's a great question. I, I would say on top of my head, there are probably one or two that really made an impact that actually helped me through my school, made me want to go and that kind of stuff. So when we had this conversation, and we agree, it's yeah. you can count it on one hand. Yeah. And I've asked a bunch of friends and family, and they agree. And it's the ratio of how many teachers you have to how many actually made an impact. It's a low number. Like and... in high school, you have 30 people, usually 30, like 30 teachers throughout the entire time, right? Right. And one or two make an impact. Correct. So we felt that we wanted to have a tutoring company that you get that type of experience where you have a tutor that's empathetic and sensitive, but also knows what they're talking about and have a way to express it uh, to a demographic that sometimes is a little disconnected from other different types of tutors and teachers and professors. So everyone has their own different learning style and teaching style. And we're trying to get the best and fit potential student with someone who has a great personality and get them to where their academic goals are. So that's basically what you're offering is the best teacher you could ask for individually for your student or for your your kid if you're the parent doing this with you. Absolutely. That is huge. I wish I had children right now because I'd actually be thankful (laughs) to have a good education because of this reason. So let me ask you, with your tutoring, now you guys cover a lot of subjects, right? A little bit everything? Yeah, we go from elementary straight through even college classes, Loved doing college. Yeah, college college essays. Yeah, college essays, SATs, and ACTs are really where was the root of our business. Right, and we've been expanding to all these different age groups and subjects. It's been really a great time and getting to know a lot of people in the community. That's awesome. Uh, Yeah, right. It's it's been a lot of fun, and the results have been even better. In the end, that's what's most important. Yep, Uh, and. You know, the results have been there, and a lot of that is because of her. I couldn't be more proud. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't throw you down the stack. Yeah, well, thankfully, it was just a doll. It would be gay. Thank you. So I want to ask you, with um, the tutoring that you guys do, now, I know you do SATs, ACTs, and that kind of stuff. How often do you guys think you keep your students for? Like, do you get a student for, like, like a week or two, or is it more like a long time than the student? What's your average turnover, let's say, for your students? Sure. So I've had across the board, I've had students who have come, you know, in a panic three weeks before the SAT, like, oh, my God, I haven't looked at anything. Um, I've had students that I've worked with from seventh grade through college. Wow. Where they've come for help in English, then they need chemistry with our chemistry tutor, math. And then they contact me, you know, their sophomore in college and I have a Shakespeare paper. What do I do? Help me. Yes. (laughs) So it depends on the students. Two weeks, five months. Right. Whatever they need. And now, where do you guys do your tutoring? Like, is it a remote thing? Is it in a library? Is it somebody's house? Where do you actually go do the tutoring? We offer a major aspect of our service is the flexibility. Good. So we could do Zoom. We could do in-person local libraries. And the time as well, we've worked with students as early as 7 in the morning, oh. as early as late, I'm sorry, as midnight. 11 o'clock at night, midnight. Do you enjoy those? Midnight hours. So I are... love middle of the night. <laughs> I love it. So midnight classes, I'm all in. That's Love huge, it. too, because I know a lot of kids, obviously, they think tutoring 4 to 6 o'clock or after school, whatever right. it is. But you guys take that and you say, no, we do it over it works for you. Yeah. You yeah. make sure the student gets the best attention that works for them and their families as well. These high school students, they have athletics. They have social demands. Yeah. They have their own academics within high school, then college prep and all these things. And we're just trying to make it as simple for them and the parents. Yeah. Uh, it's a very overwhelming time. Yeah. And we just want to simplify that process and make it enjoyable along the way. Yep. Uh, right. How do you guys scout your tutors? What's your what's your vetting process for your tutors that you hire to help you? Uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like what you were saying. Like, I've interviewed tutors where it's like they know exactly what they're talking about, but it's like they're not fun. Yeah, they're not. You're, not, you're, not, you're <laughs> like, this is great, but it's like, let's do the person talking this to the blackboard. This is what you're doing now. Right. Yes. And I've had the opposite where I'm like, oh my God, this person's so cool, but like, you don't know you're not a <laughs> <laughs> So, like, what you said, we're looking for that blend. So, we do intense interviews. We have very high standards for our tutors. Good. Um, but we get that blend of like, they're really cool. They can relate to young teenagers. Um, other stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They'll get your scores up. So yeah. And another inspiration is I always knew she was great. Yeah. With the experience and the word of mouth that you've been getting. But before going into the business, I wanted to know 
How good are you? Yeah, vet me out. <laughs> so you vetted her. Yeah, you absolutely. How'd that go? Uh, it was, it blew my mind. And that's the reason we're here now. How'd you do it? What's the process? I took a diagnostic exam, which we do offer to our students. So we know where they start right. and where they're going to end up. And we don't have to waste time on things they already know. So I did a diagnostic. I'm not going to say how long ago I was in high school, <laughs> but uh, there's dust on those. Uh, so I took the test. Okay. Took two to three lessons of Diana, about an hour each. Took a, another diagnostic and went up over 110 points. Stop it. So she kicked it. She did a, she did a great job. Yeah. yeah. It's really grammar rules. I mean, I haven't heard these wow. since I mean, 15, when I was 15, yeah. 16. So... Uh, that was so impressive to me. And, Thank uh, you. So you said, fine, screw it. We'll do a, a company. Let's, let's start a yeah. company. I trust you now. You got me smarter. Let's do this. Yeah, it was proof of concept. So yeah. what other students have you had that you have realized that you made a huge impact on that really made you say, I am so freaking glad we started this company? Yeah, I had one actually recent. We had one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that it was an elementary school student and moved here uh, within the last couple of months. Okay. And came in and was bullied at the new school, no. counting on her hands. And it was just the mother came cr crying on the phone. And it was such a, we had such a connection. Yeah. And we really just wanted to help the best we could. And fast forward, they've been working with us for a couple of months now. The daughter is smiling. She's passing her grade. She has a group of friends now. She's no longer counting on her fingers. Happy to go to school now. Happy to go to school. Yeah. I mean, her mother sent us a Christmas card and she's like, you're a part of the family now. And we're like, we're you're a part of our <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So, uh, That's yeah. a friend. Mm -hmm. What a great service you guys are offering. Not only are you giving people a safe space to feel better and to learn, but you're also giving them a community that they can be a part yeah. of, which is huge, especially if you just moved here, you're being bullied. What a great thing you guys are doing. Now, Diana, yeah, I know that you specialize in SAT stuff. I sure do. I heard you have some tips. I do. Do you want to see? Before you get there, yes. But how's SAT changed, though, just before we get there? SAT has changed, I heard. Right? I want to know about this before we go into this. I want to know. Sure. What's different in SAT? Okay, so it's going digital. No more paper, no more pens. In America, it'll happen next spring. Okay. Internationally, it's happening this spring. Oh. But we have co uh, colleagues overseas, so we have the inside scoop. So we're going to know everything about the digital SAT. So by the time our students here take it, we're pros. And you're ahead of the game. You're so yeah. ahead of the game. You heard it here first, folks. Make sure you get to these guys first. They're going to know everything everybody else does, okay? <laughs> All right. So who is going to be your test update today these questions? I have to do this? Yes, yes. yes. Really? Tell us. Yes. This have is fun. Absolutely. All right. I have no shame. Let's do this. What do we got, Diana? Show me what we're doing. Okay. So the SAT grammar, there's a lot of tips and tricks where if you memorize them, it's like you could get a really good score just by knowing these little tips. Okay. So you ready? I'm ready. Okay. This, <laughs> okay. this question right here. All right. It asks you how to combine sentences. Okay. Anytime you see that, any answer choice that has the word and, okay. always wrong. Oh. So, what three can you cross out? These three down here. And what's the answer? <laughs> Some are following. So this is show you guys on the screen here. The question says, which choice most effectively combines the two sentences at the underlined portion? Now, Diana, your tip again was? Get rid of any that have the word and. Yep. So these three down here all have end. Sayonara, I don't even know this, but I got this right. Point for me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> Try now. This tip. Yes, please. I'm excited yeah. now. It's going to be scary in the beginning. Uh, okay. Okay. Anytime you see the word such as. Okay. And there's a punctuation mark after it. Okay. Any punctuation mark. Okay. Comma, semicolon, whatever. Okay. Anything. Thank you. I know this was. <laughs> Cross it out right away. Okay. So boom, boom, boom. What's the answer? No change. You're All right. on the road. So this. again, such as. These are not the right answers. Can I take my seats over again right now? Because really? I feel like I would kick this thing's butt. You really would. Where were you a long, long time ago? <laughs> right. I didn't do the math, and I'm like, not, not doing that. Ready for more? I'm ready for more. All right. Any answer choice that is only one word? Okay. Almost always right. Almost always right. Yes. Okay, so I would go with itself with the comma? It is. Okay, so again, 
three for three. So if there's just one word, it's almost always right. Exactly. When would it not be right? Do we know that answer? I want to do this test again and get them all right from now on. There are exceptions to the rule. Which you uh, learn at the Lit Co. So you need to go to them and find out the rest of this. But this is amazing. So these are just three things, three small little tips that you share with us today. This is just a 1% of what you guys offer at LitCo, correct? Exactly. This is amazing. And of course, if you were my student, I'd explain why, yes. the reasoning behind it, so you could apply it to the questions that do have an exception to the rule. Oh my God. But do you guys do like prep classes and stuff for SATs by any chance? Like, do you guys do? So before every SAT, we do a prep class that has an hour of English and an hour of, ma an hour of math. So uh -huh. it's great for people who whether never have taken the test and just want a little overview yeah. or some who have been prepping and just want a little bit of a blast and just refresh my memory. So it works for both. That's types freaking of... fantastic. And what's great is these actually translate to the digital SAT. Oh, yeah. So this is all going to still be happening even when the next year it all changes. Right. Because grammar fundamentally like, grammar. Yeah, it's not going to change. Right. So whatever the format is, that will work. All right, so I have to give it to you guys right now because when you told me you test me, I was like, what are you doing to me? And now I feel like I'm gonna change everybody's life. Be like, did you know this on the SATs? Did you know this? All right, so I wanna thank you both for being here today. You guys were both fantastic. Oh, I hope you. that everybody understands how important these two are to our children's education. You need them. Remember that one teacher you all had? This is your one teacher for all of your <laughs> students. All right, where can we find you guys online? Yeah, Yo, you can find us at the Long Island Tutoring Company .com okay. and all our socials, which are the same. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. 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 Oh, do you do these on TikTok? Do these kind of things? It's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. And one Get last ready. thing, I want to give you that big credit. You've been in business less than one year, right? Mm -hmm. You are doing fantastic. I see you everywhere. You guys are doing such a great job. Keep up the good work, all right? Make sure to check them out on Instagram. Go to their websites and all your friends with kids. Tell the parents, tell everybody, Litco, 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 all right? <laughs> Thank you guys for being here today. High it five. It's a pleasure. You're crushing it. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you guys next next time. Hey, make sure to follow our social media at Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Going Local TV. And if you have any information for us or want to be a part of our show, email us at info at goinglocal.tv. Hey, everybody. We are here today with the owner of Always Sober, Johnny Berry. Hey, Johnny. How are you today? What's going on? How are you doing? Thank I'm you for so having me. I'm so glad to have you here today. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. I met Johnny online about, what, like a month ago? Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. You reached out to me on Instagram ago. to show me your yeah, story. Yeah, like I me. liked a whole bunch of pictures and I DM'd you guys and uh, trying to make something happen. Well, let me tell you what, why we have in the studio today is Johnny's got a great story about why he is always sober. Johnny, what, what is always sober and how does it all come about? So basically, <clears throat> oh. You got this, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fireplace. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so my name is Johnny Bay. I'm 23 years old. I never drank, I never smoked, never will, but I don't judge anybody who does. And I uh, make videos online and I sell clothing, basically just trying to promote to like any age, especially like the young kids, you know, not to fall into peer pressure and uh, just to be themselves because my thing is like, you know, you don't need to have fun. And a lot of young kids are doing these things and they don't know why they're doing it. They're just trying to fit in or be cool. And, you know, they see whatever everybody else is doing and uh, they don't really understand the concept of like how it can affect them negatively. And uh, yeah, that's basically that. So what you're telling me is basically you're an advocate for kids that, you know, who don't need peer pressure for drugs and alcohol. And you're giving them an offer of a lifestyle that, listen, you can be you without these things. You right. don't need to go and drink and to go do drugs to fit in and to have fun. Right, yeah. Yeah, like I've always said, like, I'm the life of the party and I don't even drink. Yeah. You know, um, like I still go out and ha still have fun at the bars or wherever. Um, but I always just like wanted to be my own self. I didn't want to be anybody else other than me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been pretty good so far. And once I started the, the brand, like there was no going back. Yeah. You know, and I have like a very addictive personality. I have ADHD too. And a lot of people with ADHD um, uh, suffer from like getting addicted to drugs and alcohol. Um, like an article that was written about me, they said 25% uh, of alcoholics have ADHD. Wow. And a lot of people don't really like know that. Yeah. But when I'll be posting videos, and I'll say something about ADHD, they're like, oh, wow, I have that too, but I didn't realize that. Yep. You know, so sometimes, like, not that I feel guilty, but it's like I beat the system somehow, you know? Y yeah, you didn't become part of the statistic. Yeah, yeah yep. like, a lot of people with my brain and, like, the, my tendencies aren't like me, you know? Um, 
So I'm just trying to show people, like, look, like, if I could do it, you know, there's hope out there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Was it hard growing up peer pressure? Did you have a lot of friends that would come at you a lot and say, Johnny, why aren't you drinking? Have some beer. Smoke this right, weed. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't say it was hard because, you know, I made it happen. But I would say this. It definitely happened for sure. But I just knew in the back of my mind, like, I'm just not, it's just not right. That's what is in the back of my mind. I'm like, it's just not right, you know. And once, like, 11th grade hit, I was, like, really being more like, oh, I'm not drinking. I'm not drinking. And then people would, like, kind of slowly, like, start to be like, ah, oh, like, maybe this kid's really not going to drink. He means it, yeah. And then once 12th grade hit, like, that was it. Like, and they were, it was known. Yeah, like, everybody was like, all right, like, he really ain't drinking. He's not going to, you can't push him like, anymore. <laughs> yeah, and they were like, um, like, not even a sip at prom or anything. I was like, no. And, uh, you know, prom came and went, nothing. And like, oh, what about when you're 21? You know, yeah. and I was like, no. So it was just always like, oh, but what about when you're 30? Like, I'm just, it's just going to keep going. Like, I'm never going to do it, gonna you know? Just not going to do it. Uh, because I'm a very, like, you know, confident person. And my word, like, means a lot to me. So, like, when I say something, I'm going to do, do it. You're going to do it, yep. You know? And uh, I don't want to, like, contradict myself. And especially, like I said, like, once I had the, my business, my brand, like, there's no turning back. Exactly. You know? So your parents must have had an easy time raising you, but how much did your friends' parents love you too? Because if you're hanging yeah. out with Johnny Berry, you're not doing anything wrong, sure. right? Is that how that was? Yeah, that's what they would say, kind of. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I just have like a lot of respect for my parents and everything like that too. And, um, you know, like my friends' parents, everybody always like, oh, you're such a good boy, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I was always, always appreciated that. But like, this is just how I am. Like, this is what, what my life is. You know, I never really thought of it you know, as anything different it than just, just yeah. being me. It's normal, yeah. Um, but I think definitely, like, you know, get, as I get older, I start to see, like, it, people start doing these things even younger. Yep. You know, like, yep. when I was growing up, you know, somebody was always doing something, but, you know, a group of my, like, a lot of my friends or people I knew really didn't really start until, like, maybe, like, later in 10th grade yeah like 9 10th 11th or 12th but now it's like six, they're like 6th 7th and 8th grade yeah. i'm like wow like everybody's vaping and doing all this stuff and it's like like the, the one thing i do want to say though is like you know i don't judge anybody i really don't like i'm just trying to show people look this is how i live my life yep. and hopefully you know someone can get inspiration from it and uh but i just know that you know sometimes they just don't understand what they're actually doing yep and uh for instance, I was at the doctor's the other day because uh, something's my chest. I'm fine, but I was <laughs> like, good. I was like wheezing my chest or something. So um, I was like, well, at least I know it's not from smoking. Exactly. And then the doctor's like, oh, well, what about vaping? I was like, no, I never nope. did that too. And then I'm like, I'm like, oh, here's my car. This is my brain, always sober. And she's like, oh, my my daughter's 15. I should show it to her, you know. Yes. And then I think she said something like, oh, my other kid's like 12 or something, so he's a little young. No, show but in him my now. Head, I'm like, show him but now. But in my head, I'm like, ooh, I'm like. Yeah. You know, it's never too young to, you know, um, learn about these things. And good message you're giving, too. Yeah, for sure. So when did the clothing line start? When did you decide to say, you know what, I'm going to put this on a shirt. I'm going to make right. sure everybody knows my brand, knows what I stand for. Yeah, so I would say about 19, 20 years old, I, um, one day I thought of, I'm like, you know, and I've always been the type to, like, entrepreneur. I used to have shirts that said, like, rule number one, don't be number two. Love that. And, like, my last name is Barry, so it would be hashtag Barry Motivational. Oh, I love that. So uh, one day I was like, you know, I'm always sober, right? So I'm like, huh. I was like, that's a good name. I was it like, is. I want to buy a hoodie and wear it, like, to show people, look, this is what I am. Yeah. You know? So I looked it up. Nothing. No one anywhere. I'm like, wow, because I thought I really thought it Light was bulb. such a good. Yeah, I really <laughs> thought it was such a good name, you know. So I, I couldn't find it anywhere. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just make it myself. Good job. So then what I did was I went on a website and I made like two T-shirts. I said like always sober. The font was like terrible too. I still have them to this day because <laughs> once once I become you know this big brand. Yep, want to show I, what like, you started you show, with like, where I started. And then I had like my Instagram. I didn't even have a uh, business Instagram at the time. It was just like my regular Instagram, the Johnny Berry on the back of it. And then I would just like wear it out. And then, um, you know, pa fast forward a couple months, I went on GoDaddy.com and I looked up AlwaysSober.com. Yeah. Now, the crazy thing is I wish I had this on video and proof because no one would ever believe me. <laughs> But it was like four thousand dollars. Are you serious? It's four thousand dollars to buy the to domain. buy the domain. And I'm like, 
I don't have four thousand no. dollars, but I really wanted it to be nice, clean, like always sober dot com. Exactly, That's it. nothing not sober dot com. Yeah, dot not quote, blah blah blah. Yeah. So I just kept on looking back, and for somehow, like three weeks later, it's at like nine hundred ninety-five dollars. Click. <laughs> so what happened? Well, actually, I should have just done click right then and there. But what I did was, somebody owned it, but they weren't using it. So like there was no, they just had the name. So what I did was on my Instagram, I had like shirts that like had always sober on it and like the bio and everything so what i did was i took it all down okay because i didn't want this person that had it right to, to take your idea and then just yeah. charge you yep. know ten thousand dollars whatever so what i did was i placed the bid the lowest bid was like 660 bucks i placed it and they said no so i'm in my room and i'm like I have my, i'm at my computer in my room and i'm like you know what I was like, there's never going to be the right time. Got to just do it. You just got to do it because you're always going to be like, oh. There's this, three, there's Once this. I save 3000 once I save this, then I'll do this. It's like you're just going to keep on saying that forever. Yep, you just know? do it. So what I did was I had like $1,200 to my name, and it, it ended up being like, like $1,000. So I just bought it, and that was that. And go with it. So then I knew like, all right, this is a big investment, so I'm just all in now. That's perfect. Yeah. And so now your brand's been up for what, almost a, a two years now? Yeah, about that? like two and change. Now, if you want to buy an Always Sober sweatshirt, you're going to go to alwayssober.com, yeah, which always is fantastic. Sober .com, yep. Now, before we close up, I want to say one thing. Now, anybody who's watching at home, if you have any kind of connections to high school schools anywhere at all, I want Johnny Berry to go and talk in front of these high school students and showcase who he is, give them all that confidence, that power to know that Always Sober is an okay way to live, all right? Sure. So please do that for us. Johnny, it was a pleasure talking to you today. Thank you Thank for being you. here. I appreciate Your it. Your Instagram handle is Always Sober. So, Always Sober brand. And, um, on TikTok, I also have Always Sober Brand and also The Johnny Berry. That has the more followers on that one. Check out both of the TikTok guys, Appreciate all right? It. Make sure to support local. Check out Johnny Berry shirts. Thanks for tuning in with you guys. And don't forget to celebrate local. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hey, make sure to follow our social media at Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Going Local TV. And if you have any information for us or want to be a part of our show, email us at info at goinglocal.tv. All right, so for those of you who are wondering what the hell is Going Local TV, we're gonna tell you. So Going Local TV is a brand new streaming platform. It's just like YouTube or Netflix, but it's super easy to use and it's all about local Long Island businesses. So if you go to goinglocal.tv, you're gonna see our channels laid out, they're beautifully done, you're gonna see different categories of shows to watch, episodes, segments, neighborhood channels. Best part about it though is you can watch an entire show or watch segments of each one. Easy, right? So, in addition to that, we're always looking for viewers to come check out our website, so make sure you check out goinglocal.tv. We're also looking for sponsors and advertisers, and we love having new guests on our show. So if you're interested in talking with us, make sure to email me at melissa at goinglocal.tv, or to check out our website, let us know what you think, and check us out on Instagram as well. Thank you guys for watching, and make sure you stay tuned for all we have to offer you on Going Local TV. A lot's coming up soon, so stay tuned and share everywhere you can. Share on Instagram, Facebook, social media, tell your friends, tell your family, and let us know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.